Hey everybody, what's going on? This is Sam from Historic Travels and welcome to another video. And as always, before we get started today, I'd just like to take a quick moment to welcome all my new subscribers and to thank everybody who's been leaving me comments and messages down below. Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate it. And if you would like to take a couple extra steps to help support the channel a little bit more, there's a merch store and a Patreon for this channel in the links below. And to all my Patreon supporters out there, in case you missed it, the next Patreon exclusive video went live last night. So there is a link for that on the Patreon page if you guys would like to go and watch that. All right, everybody. Well, hey, without any further ado, let's get into today's topic. Whenever I go to study the story of the RMS Titanic, there's a number of things that I like to research about the ship. You know, I like to learn more about how the vessel was built. I like to know more about what happened to her on the night she went down. But one of my favorite things to study in particular is the story of all the people who were on board the Titanic. Because it's through their stories that we even know what happened to the ship in the first place. And by studying their stories, it brings us closer to understanding what really happened to the Titanic on the night she went down. However, whenever I am doing research on these famous people from the Titanic, we already know a lot about the more famous people on the ship. We already know a lot about Captain Smith. We know a lot about Molly Brown. We know a lot about Jack Thayer, you know, those type of people. But what I like to do is I like to put my attention and focus into the people who we don't really know that much about because there's a lot of people and a lot of stories from the Titanic disaster whose stories are largely unknown. And I like to focus on them and tell their stories so that what they experienced and what they went through on the night the Titanic went down will not be forgotten. And that is what inspired me to make this video. What if I was to tell you that there is a famous person from the Titanic disaster, but he's famous by image only? And most people don't even know his name or know his story. And honestly, he really didn't have anything to do with the Titanic disaster whatsoever. But he was in the right place at the right time in London, right after the disaster. So his image has been forever associated with the story of the Titanic. And his story is what I'm going to tell you in today's video. This is the famous image or picture that I was talking about earlier. In this picture, you see a boy selling a newspaper that says, Titanic disaster, great loss of life. And this picture is one of the most famous photographs ever taken that is associated with the Titanic disaster. Anybody who researches the Titanic will come across this picture at some point. But in this picture, I want to talk about the boy who's actually selling the newspaper. Because for as famous as this picture is, not that many people know anything about the boy who is actually selling the newspaper, even though his image has been forever associated with the Titanic disaster. So for this video, I thought I would do my part and tell the story of the boy selling the newspaper of the world's most famous maritime disaster. The kid in the picture's name is Edward Parfait, but from what I could find about him, it seems like everybody just called him Ned. He was born in London on July 21st, 1896, which means he would have been about 16 years old at the time of the Titanic disaster. Now, I tried to find information about his early life, like his childhood, but I couldn't find that much information on it. But what I did find was that he was one of six siblings, so he came from a pretty big family. Now, before he got a job selling newspapers, like what we see in that picture, he actually had a job doing construction work in the city of London. Now, something happened to him while he was doing that kind of work. I couldn't find out exactly what. If you do know, please leave it in the comment section because I would be very curious to learn. But it seems like somehow he got injured on the job and could not continue doing work in the construction industry. So after that happened, he went and got a job selling newspapers like what we see in that famous photograph. And then, not long after he started selling newspapers, the Titanic disaster occurred. And that's when the famous photograph of him selling the Titanic newspapers was taken, forever linking his image to the story of the ill-fated RMS Titanic. Now, just two years after that photo was taken, World War I broke out in Europe. And at the time war broke out, Edward would have been around 18 years old. However, it's important to note that he did not join the military then. He wouldn't join the military for another two years. Now, in the year 1916, he finally did sign up for the military, and he joined the Royal Artillery and was immediately sent to the front lines. And what he didn't realize at the time is that soon, him and other members of his squad would play a vital role in helping hold back the Germans and saving the lives of the countless men that were assigned to his unit. 
For the next two years, Edward was very active on the front lines of the battlefield. His commander sent him on a number of dangerous missions, and his commander even said that Edward was not afraid of a fight, and he always did what he had to do to safeguard himself and his team. His commander once said that he was one of the most trustworthy individuals that he had in his entire unit. Now, the big event that would occur with Edward, that would forever give him a spot as a hero in the First World War, occurred two years after he joined the military, in March of 1918. In March of 1918, Edward was fighting near a town called Arras, located in the country of France. And at some point, the Germans began launching gas attacks on his section of the front. And when this happened, there was a huge breakdown of communication between Edward's squad and a bunch of the other squads. And then during this hectic time period, the Germans began advancing on their position. Now, due to everything that was going on, all the other squads in the area could not see the advancing German army, but Edward's squad could, so they were able to lay down suppressing fire, thus delaying the Germans' time to advance, thus giving their own troops time to build up their defenses again and do what they could to hold off the German army. The actions of Edward and his squad was also noticed by their commander, Field Marshal Douglas Hack. Douglas Hagg was so impressed by their actions that he wrote a letter praising all the members of Edward's squad. In the letter, he said that their devotion to duty and good work has won them an incredible honor, and gives great credit to all of them and to the awe of the Royal Artillery. So honestly, if Edward could survive the war and make it home, should he choose to stay in the military, it looks like he could have had a very bright future with it. But sadly, it wasn't meant to be. On October 29, 1918, just two weeks before the end of the war, Edward was due to go on leave, but before he left, he was ordered by a local quartermaster to go and pick up some clothes from a local building. While Edward was in the building picking up clothes, the building was hit by a shell from German artillery, and the building exploded, killing Edward, just two weeks before the end of World War I. At the time of his passing, Edward was only 22 years old, and even though he wasn't here on Earth for very long, his actions during the First World War no doubt saved the lives of countless other soldiers in his unit. After he passed away, his commander, Douglas Hagg, wrote a letter to one of Edward's brothers, and in the letter he said the following, On many occasions he accompanied me during severe shelling, and I always placed the greatest confidence in him. Just that statement alone shows how much Edward was respected. That, that comment also shows how crucial Edward's actions were during the First World War. Think about what might have happened if he hadn't have been there. Think about how many other men might have been killed during the German gas attack that we talked about earlier. It really does go to show how the actions of just one person can help shape the fate of so many others. After the war ended, Edward was laid to rest in a British memorial cemetery located near Vershon, Mulgare in the country of France. So now all of you guys know the life story of the boy in the picture selling the newspaper, telling the world about what happened to the RMS Titanic. Special thanks to Patreon Captain Level supporter Callum Whaley. Thank you so much for all the support, man.